Hello everyone. So welcome to my next session which is on how I converted my top B school calls. So understand that after guiding you guys throughout the entire year, various exams, CAT, ZAT, SNAP, IFT and all these exams, the next best thing on all of your minds is how to convert your B school calls. I so what? My top B school calls. So you understand that after guiding you guys. So now the next thing that I'll be looking at is sharing my experiences of how I converted my B school calls so that all of you can look towards a strong point of guidance on how to do it yourselves as well. So as you know, I had convert from Exeter, which is the top most institute in ZAT. I convert from one of the, uh, some of the old IMs as well, which means I believe I'm reasonably good enough to guide all of you. So this session, which is on how I converted my top B school calls, is brought to you by Meenalanchan Dutta, a cat, 100 person Tyler. So before I start, I would request all of you to kindly share the YouTube link with all your friends and fellow aspirants so that everybody's able to attend this YouTube session live. So I'll pause for a minute, make sure everybody is sharing this video link on your various cat preparation groups and forums. So this is a brief introduction about myself and also this is me on the Anacademy Learning App. So all of you can follow me on the Anacademy Learning App where I'm one of the top most educators for the CAT segment. So here you'll get updates on all my new courses, be it Quants, be it LRDI, be it GDPI and so on. You can watch all my lessons, videos, you can download the slides, you can watch offline as well. So all the features are available. Make sure you join the Learning app and searching for my name, Nilanjan Datta. So as you can understand, being 100% Tyler myself, with 100 in DILR, 99.9 .9 in Quants, I'll be somebody who will be able to guide you at best towards your top B school dreams. So again, a gentle reminder, please share this YouTube session, live session link on your various timelines, on various cat preparation groups and forums, be it on Facebook, WhatsApp and other platforms because I want everybody to be attending this session. Also, those of you who keep on asking me about my Anacademy Plus courses, so today, that is February 9th, I'm getting started with my first live class on Anacademy Plus. So as you know, I am a cat 100 person Tyler, a DILR 100 person Tyler 2, and I'll be starting with DILR as my first course on Anacademy Plus. I'll be soon starting a Quants live classes as well. So all you need to do is, currently we've changed the Anacademy Plus model to something which provides you unlimited access to all live classes, not just mine, but by all top educators. So all you need to do is go to anacademy.com slash plus, select your goal as follows, which is going to contribute to the CAT segment. The moment you select your goal as CAT segment, you'll get this kind of an option where you have the CAT subscription model. So unlike earlier, when all of you will subscribe to my LRDI courses individually, my Quants courses individually, my workshop courses, my decision making courses and so on. Now you just have to purchase a one year pass for the entire CAT segment and that will cover not only all my courses but all the courses by all fellow CAT educators as well. 
Remember, the courses for all the CAT exams will run throughout the year. Also, a lot of you have been asking me on some discount codes and referral codes. So this is a discount code you can use for your CAT subscription. So make sure in the post of discount code your, or referral code, you're providing my name, Nilanjan. There's no space between Nilanjan and Datta. You copy paste this because then you'll be eligible to get a perfect discount as well on your CAT subscription purchase. So make sure you're doing that. This will be on top of the already 50% off they are getting because of the yearly pass. You'll be getting another certain percentage discount or off on top of that as well if you're taking my referral code. So then have you invited all your friends for the session? Because now what I'll be talking about is what was my personal interview rounds cheat code that I would use to convert all my calls. So I'm going into it in a lot of details in this session. So again, I repeat, all of you, make sure you're sharing this session link with all your friends and fellow aspirants in various groups and forums. Also, since our live classes are starting today at 10 p.m., make sure everybody has enrolled before 10 p.m. You subscribe to the CAT One Year Pass because that will take care of your quants as well as Diala needs. And this discount coupon will help you further. So now then, let's get started with what was my PI cheat code to and help me convert my top B school calls because these, I believe, can really, really help you move ahead and convert your calls as well. So what I'll be doing is, in a point of form, I'll be looking at some of the important things. Remember, in your WAD GDPI round, the most important part is the personal interview because that is a time given is entirely onto you. Unlike in a WAT or in a GD, especially in a GD, where it is not about you, it's about the entire group, whether it be 10 or 15 people, and you never really know who are the people who will be a part of your group. In the PI session, it is completely up to you. And which is why after a written exam, the next most important thing is the PI round. So the first thing that I would make sure that I do in the personal interview round is this. And that is drive the interview by myself. At the moment I say drive the interview by myself, a lot of you will be asking me how. So I'll just give you a brief about me. If you've seen the first slide that I was sharing about myself in the initial stages, you'll have noticed that I'm very, very strong in extracurriculars and in positions of responsibility. So for example, I had done things in debating, in acting, in puzzle solving, in sports, and in B-plan competition. These were five very strong areas in most of which I had done things at a high level. And some of these I had done things even in national level competitions. So as you can understand, these were my very, very strong areas. The other side was position of responsibility where I was part of the e-cell, heading my e-cells in my college as part of the college fest, fests and so on. So again, these were two another strong areas on the POR's standpoint. So what I would try to do is I knew that if I talk about this and given that a lot of these things I've got achievements at the national level and so on. If I talk about this, automatically the interviewer will get interested. So I've already given myself seven different 
pointers to talk about. So what would I do? Initially, you might have noticed that one of the important things I need to fill is the form. And in the form, there are a lot of these questions which seem pretty irrelevant. Questions like, give one example of a leadership thing. Give one example of a situation where you came out of a crisis. All these kind of questions, all I would do is take up any one example from this list or from this list and mention about that in detail. Also, what I would do is every answer in the form would mention a different activity out of these seven. Why so? Because automatically what that would do is it would give the interviewer a very strong subset that, okay, fine, grill this person on any of these seven topics. And the same strategy I would employ when I'm answering questions of the interviewer as well. I'll always direct him basically to one out of these seven. If you talk about M why MBA, for example, I would talk about the fact that my e-cell thing, I would talk about the fact that I won in national, part of it I won in national level B plan competitions, part of an international B plan competition, and so on. Headed the e-cell, some of the, some of the th successful initiatives of startup ideas that we've been part of the e-cell, including things which went on to become part of the top 30 student startups in India during that season. So automatically what that would do is the interview would drive into why MBA, why entrepreneurship and so on. And I knew that was an area where I am extremely confident of handling. So again, all I was doing was I was in continually pushing the interviewer towards my strong areas. In most of my interviews, they either gave me a debate topic or they gave me, asked me to recite a few lines from a certain play or something because I would talk so much about acting. Again, most of these, what I would do is I would correlate them to skills that I've learned that will really help me in an MBA program. Be it when you're organizing a fest, be it the fact that you're involved in sponsorships, you might have been involved in publicizing the fest, you might have been involved in growing the fest on a certain level in the previous year to maybe 60% higher level in the next year. So I'd mention all those pointers with numbers, with data points, and so on. So automatically what I would do is, would keep the interviewer engaged, remember this, these things that I've talked about were kind of unique to me. He'll not be getting that in every other aspirant. So in the process, what I was doing was I've also ticking up on the point that I am somewhat different from the regular aspirant who's coming here. And the moment you can prove you're different, the moment you can prove that you've got something different to offer and the fact that you will add value to the batch, it automatically increases your chances. Note, it's also important that you show how some of these qualities are relevant for an MBA program. For example, I would stress a lot my communication skills or my analytical skills because of my involvement with path solving competitions and I would correlate things very well. So, so again, the next thing I was saying is try and steer the PI into extracurriculars and PORs. And the reason is simply this. If you're doing this, your chance of converting your calls increases drastically. So going by past record that I've seen with aspirants, if an interview revolves primarily on extracurriculars or around PORs, somebody's chance of conversion is much, much higher than the regular ACADs questions or current affairs. So these kind of questions itself kind of signifies that the interviewee is on the boring side and there's nothing much to explore about him, which is why the interviewer falls back on traditional questions on current affairs and ACADs, which aren't very relevant 
for knowing that person. Remember, ACADs and current affairs are just not relevant directly for your profile. It's just that they're doing it because they have nothing else to ask you. So do not make give it give put a situation like this in front of the interviewer where he has nothing to ask you and hence is having to resort to such questions. The question is, how do you keep the interviewer always on the extracurriculars and POR track? So when you say the first answer, that is, tell me about yourself, tell yourself, then only I would talk about these in brief. So automatically what I would do is I would put the bait for the interviewer to pick up anyone and ask question. For example, let's say he takes up debating. So what I would do is keep saying, talking of interesting incidents in debating, how I learn things, how things have improved in me as a person, as a form of law, talking about logic, talking of different topics, they give me certain topics to speak about, or speak about them, impress them, so at the end of five minutes, they would be impressed. The next time they ask a question on a certain skill, again, I would go back to either something I learned from these fests, or from these organizing things, or from my extra curriculars, but I would choose a different one this time. Why? Different one? Because what that would do is that would give the interviewer a perception that I'm somebody who's diversely skilled, diversely talented. And the moment you're giving the interviewer that feeling, the chances of conversion increase drastically. So I would always make it a point that I'm just, all I'm doing is I'm moving from this debating to fest, then fest to sports, then maybe sports to acting, then maybe e cell, B plan, puzzle. So I'm continuously keeping him within this cocoon of what is called my comfort zone. And in the process, what will happen is 15 to 20 minutes of the interviewer's time would be up. And the moment 15 20 minutes is up, he would also look at winding up the interview and you are done for the day. And then maybe they will only move into a bit of YMBA questions just to be sure on that. But again, that is something where you can talk of your, because you have, since I would mention about the entrepreneurship plan somewhere along the line, it will automatically, this fact that was part of B plan competition at one and national levels and so on, fact that was part of the head of the E cell of my college, this automatically did help me tremendously. So again, there are two aspects to it. One is about speaking about extracurricular and PORs. And for those of you who are looking at CAT and all these exams, the next year, it's very important that you make sure your profile is well-rounded as well. Like you can say, I had diverse things. And each of these that I'm talking about were very strong extracurricular and PORs where I could talk on individual each of them for at least 20-25 minutes. These are, and these are not just mention of something that I've done maybe once in school or something. These are all of them which I've done and I kept on pursuing throughout the period. And that consistency is also something they really, really tend to emphasize upon or look at in the interviews. So we have this live chat feature on the YouTube. So make sure that any kind of queries that you're having, you are putting them down in the live chat so that we could discuss them. So I'll just pause for a minute in case anybody has any question that they want to put in the live chat.
हाय प्रभात The next most important part, and this is something I will stress on in a lot of details, is the ability to link whatever I've done in the past with why I want to do an MBA and my goals. Remember, this why MBA concept is nothing but linking your past to your goals. And the basic idea is do not belittle your past. The reason why I'm saying this is. Over the last so many years, I've been taking mock interviews repeatedly at a number of various organizations, and what I've noticed is most aspirants end up belittling their past. For example, let's say you're working in a manufacturing company. Please do not just keep speaking ill about your company. Do not just keep on speaking about no learning opportunity in the company, and so on. Every company has learning opportunities. It's you who needs to figure out how you are learning. Also, please understand that there is a significant weightage for your profile and for what you've done in your past, which automatically means that if you are not speaking well about your past, then there's no reason why they should give you a good score. If in case your past carries ten marks. You need to make sure you get a nine on ten and not a two or ten, two on ten because of speaking ill about your past. Well, Prabhat is asking, will you provide reasoning lectures from basics in an academy plus? Obviously, Prabhat, what we are starting from today, so tonight, 10 p.m. We are starting. So you might have seen tonight. 10 p.m. We are starting with the first class. Make sure you are starting right in the first class. Today we'll start with the absolute basics today, and the next couple of classes we'll start with the absolute basics. But again, we'll also be looking at very advanced sessions on DILR as well. So make sure you're subscribing to the one-year course. This is not just for my DILR course, also my quants course. We'll start from the right basics. You can always use the different discount code as Nilanjan Datta. Just to ensure, without no no space between Nilanjan and Datta, just to ensure that you get the extra discounts that are available on the CAT subscription, and go for a one year pass. Not just my DILR, but my Quants Life classes also will start right from the basics. So, Prabhat, make sure you and all your friends enroll before 10 p.m. Tonight, because 10 p.m. tonight, we are starting with the first session on DILR. Any other questions, Prabhat, on that? So go for a one-year subscription and go with this referral code and inform all your friends to do the same. So moving back to why it is so important to link your past and your goals because this will be this is what YMBA is all about. Remember, most of the people who are coming to the PI round have done really well in their written exams. Or have a decent profile. So the only major thing that remains is whether the reasons to do an MBA is serious enough, or is it just another case of following the crowd? And that is the exact kind of audience that the personal interview panels are trying to filter out. They do not want people who are not sure about what they want to do. And another thing, remember, if you're talking about your goals at the same time. If you are cribbing about your past, it automatically means that in your past you're not used to making good decisions, which means you may not be a wise person in choosing your goals as well. So please do not belittle your past. Talk about the fact that you confidently chose the decision. For example, when they asked me why moving from engineering to MBA, I was very clear on the fact. At the end of class 12, I was doing really well in physics, chemistry, maths. That is the reason why I felt I should be continuing in the science discipline. I did well in engineering exams. I went in. 
please avoid making unnecessary statements like my parents forced me and so on they do not speak good on you and what i would do is or acknowledge that the thing as i went into my years in college and i explored various domains i started liking some of my activities especially things around b plan and so on e sell engagements management responsibility as part of fest and so on and i felt this is something which is suited to me more and that is when i gravitated towards an mba so what i'm doing is i'm linking things up at the same time speaking good about my past the next thing and this is something which is very very important that is where you have that enthusiasm in you when you are speaking i for one believe that if enthusiasm reeks while you speak then automatically your chance of conversion becomes higher because you become much more noticeable and so on as a matter of fact do you follow me on an academy for the past year or so would be agree that whenever i speak i speak with a lot of enthusiasm in my voice and that extra bit of jump in your step the extra bit of spring in your voice really really helps in converting your pi because that gives the other person a belief that this person is really really serious and for him it's a big occasion remember if the enthusiasm that they show then automatically the chance of them remembering you at the end of the interview or the chance of them being sure that your why and your reasons are clear is a bit dicey also make sure you're saying short term and long term goals which you can justify for example i would talk of entrepreneurship because i had done similar things i was part got part of the entrepreneurship cell in on the cell i do all the talk about the activities we've done including the startup ideas we nurtured so that automatically strengthened our position and our claim so again i make sure you understand your goals it shouldn't be something like this but i ask a lot of people why entrepreneurship and they have no idea whatsoever i ask them to at least name me a few mbas who are entrepreneurs and they still have no idea whatsoever that is not the way to be in interviews to talk about entrepreneurship you should be able to speak volumes about it it shouldn't be a case where you're not able to justify your long term goals similarly a lot of you mention that you want to do something in marketing or in finance but in that case at least make sure you're aware about marketing and finance it shouldn't be the case you're talking about marketing and then when i ask you what well, about a career starting a career in sales and you're like no no sales is something i don't want to do please understand if you're saying a particular the goal make sure you understand that goal really really well and the easiest way to understand the goal of yours would be that would be going through linkedin profiles why because what linkedin does is whatever profile you're interested in you can actually look up people belonging to the similar profiles passing out from similar b schools from the ones you're interviewing for and if you can talk about some of the roles and responsibilities they have and your understanding about them and why that excites you then automatically your chances of converting your calls increase drastically and that i believe is very very important so any questions thus far All those on live chat any questions
So, as I already mentioned, I was talking about long-term goal as entrepreneurship, and I've always said, if you can justify and talk about entrepreneurship for even 10 minutes, five or 10 minutes in an interview and justify it, then automatically your chance of conversion become drastically high. But what you need to do is make sure being able to justify this. It shouldn't be like you have no idea about entrepreneurship, no idea about startups and so on. If that is happening, then your conversion chances will go down. You need to make sure that you understand your long-term goal of entrepreneurship in a very detailed fashion. So this is where all these things would come in. Talking aggressively with a B plan ideas that I had about, and I mean, not just the idea, I would actually have everything ready. Like for example, the kind of surveys we did pre-product, the kind of cash flows we projected, the kind of publicity measures we were taking, all of those details were in place. So guys, you can understand, As you can understand, automatically that increases your chances of conversion drastically. If somebody can speak about details about startup idea, about his business plans, about what work they've done in the entrepreneurship shell, about various activities that they've done to publicize in the operations, what are the challenges they faced, how they overcame that, what are the cash flows expected for the next four or five years, all those topics you can speak about in details in interviews and now you can understand the chance of conversion becomes much more higher because you it's evident that you understand what you're saying you understand entrepreneurship you ask me quest questions on the beast school that you're going into name some successful entrepreneurs from there i would be able to do that as well i would be able to talk about startups at that juncture for at least 10-15 minutes. It shouldn't be a case, but today if I ask you about an Ola or an Uber or how an oil's business model is and you have no idea whatsoever about how the business model works, how funding works and so on. Remember, there are a lot of ways in which entrepreneurship can, he can help you and how an MBA can help you if you're becoming an entrepreneur. And some of them I'll be discussing now. So a few of the important pointers is that first thing, when you're starting an entire business of your own, you cannot just look at one area. You need to understand the entire aspect of business, be it the finances, be it the pricing model, be it the marketing part, the publicity part, the operations challenges, the writing, recruiting the right people, and so on and that is where an MBA first year program really helps you get a complete overview on business. The next thing is once you've got the knowledge the next thing is coming up with the one in a million idea and for doing that you need to be able to brainstorm smart ideas think ahead of time what will succeed in the long run what are the ideas which are really, really good? And for brainstorming that, you need like-minded people. If not just like-minded people, we do brainstorm ideas, but also the importance of what we call the co-founding team. The co-founding team having the right mission and values as you. And to do that, you need to ensure that you get like-minded, intelligent people with whom we can brainstorm. And that is where the B-School networking will really, really help you. Because there you'll get a lot of diverse backgrounds, people coming up with excellent ideas. Now, next thing that they might ask you is, what about the fact that only 3% of the B-School alumni ultimately pursue entrepreneurship? Do something which you can actually take to your advantage and say that... Because there is only 3% that 
that puts in a lot more avenues for MBAs to excel in entrepreneurship because the competition is so less. The next thing is, it's actually a good thing that 97% are sticking back in corporate. Why? Because five, 10 years down the line, when you'll be an entrepreneur and you'll be looking to create those initial few contacts, initial few strategic tie-ups with different players, different MNCs and so on, that is when these other 97% who will be in top-notch corporate positions in MNCs and in other top companies, they will be able to help you with creating those tie-ups and the strategic contacts in their firm. You, because of your B-School tag, because of your exclusivity of being from a top B-School in India, you'll be having to connect and network with them which you can leverage to ensure that your publicity, your word of mouth, your ideas, initial few customers, all of that is in track. The next biggest challenge that entrepreneurs face is scaling up. Scaling up, one part of the idea, but the other part that happens is the funding part. And this is where being from a top B school really helps. Even today, when we talk of funded startups, we get to hear things like IIT, IM, co-founders, and so on. Or at least the core team having a lot of IIT, IM people. And this is where it is very important that in case you are somebody who is having a top B school background with you, that then the complete belief that a team, that a funding team or angel investors will have in your idea that increases. I'm not saying idea not important. Idea is still perhaps the most important thing. But along with that, the credibility factor. That, okay, fine. This person is from a top B school. His uh, her ability to convert this opportunity is higher. In the moment that belief or sense of trust combines with an idea, that is when they will be much more ready or willing to invest in your idea or in your startup. Do you know the key ways in which entrepreneurship is something in which MBA is really, really useful? So make sure you're being able to justify that and you're being able to showcase certain traits in you which shows that you have the risk taking appetite, the risking ability in your life. Note, but risking ability, it's also about calculated risk, not randomly doing anything for the sake of it. So try and make sure you're ready with a couple of examples where you took a risk taking measure, with something out of the ordinary and you backed yourself and you managed to succeed. You should be able to talk about such examples. For example, I would be able to talk about the challenges I would face in my business plan in the startups of part of the entrepreneurship cell and where I felt certain things were lacking, which with a little more knowledge, with a little more polish, I could really, really take forward. And that would automatically build for a lot more credible story. So any questions thus far on goals on YMBA? I would like to inform all of you who just joined that today at 10 p.m. we get started with my first live class in Academy Plus. We are initially starting with the other live classes followed by Quants which will be covered by Meenalan Jandatta, a cat, 100% Tyler. So what you need to do is you subscribe to the CAT subscription pass, which is a pass to get unlimited access to all the plus courses by all the top educators, including me. It includes all my courses on DILR, Quant, later on maybe RC courses, maybe that courses, other exams courses as well, including GDPI and so on. Everything will be available thanks to this CAT pass. 
Also, as per the CAT Pass the CAT subscription model, since it is now not course based but period based, make sure you're going for the one year pass. Given that this one year period will cover your CAT as well as your other exams as well as your GDP and a lot of it will be covered in this one year. So make sure today before the 10 p.m. class itself, all of you have enrolled. Talking of discount code that a lot of you keep paying me about, this is a discount code that you can use. That is Nilanjan Dutta. There's no space between Nilanjan and Dutta. So make sure you're typing in exactly this in your discount referral code. Courses for CAT will be running right throughout the year. So again, pause for a minute in case anybody has any questions via the live chat. Then they can make their questions heard. The next important thing is ability to time pass for 10 minutes or interesting stuff. Remember, your objective is also to make yourself the, an interesting candidate. And given that an interview of 15 to 20 minutes, if you're able to time pass for 10 minutes of interesting stuff, it could be something like extracurriculars to your PRs and so on, an automatic chance of converting really increased. Similarly, if you're working and in your work ex, you can believe you can talk about something which is really interesting, really different from others, and you can talk about it for 10-15 minutes, then make sure you are doing that. For example, I would like talking about the startup ideas and so on, because that is something I'll really be able to talk about for long, and also my acting, debating and so on, so automatically the interview will get interested at the end of 20 minutes. The same thing you need to do, identify a few avenues that you can talk about. You don't just keep one single avenue, because you never know, the interviewer may not be interested in that avenue. The moment you keep a few such avenues open to the interviewer and throw all of them before him, he can pick the one that he wants to just talk about and you can yet really, really impress the interviewer. Remember, your ability to keep the interviewers engaged is very important given that taking interviews is a very challenging task. Imagine somebody interviewing 20 odd candidates, 25 candidates in a single day. That is if I take both the morning slot and the post noon slot can go up to as high as 25 candidates. So 25 candidates in a single day, taking an interview of 20 minutes on an average is very, very hectic. And taking interviews for six to seven hours at a stretch almost, maybe a lunch break or something, is not something an interviewer really enjoy. And especially towards the end, if you are of a session, it's very important that you are able to drive the interview. Other what happens is the interviewer gets bored. He would also want somebody to come here, talk about the, talk about himself well and go rather than they having to continuously look into your CV or form and question you. So later you go in an interview, it's all the more important for you to be able to drive the interview because that is when the interview is exhausted, but actually has something that can work in your favor in case you're really able to captivate the interviewer because he'll, the, the propensity to ask random questions on unrelated fields like current affairs or on, or on stuff which is not really their comfort zone or something like ACADs and so on will reduce and they'll ask you more on what you want to talk about as the interview goes later. So that is a good thing. That's important that you drive the interview by yourself. I see a lot of aspirants 
every year who come to the interview and answer in one line at a time. She so asked them a question, they'll say a line, and then they will stop. And again, you need to look at the CV again and ask them the next question. So what you're doing is the continuity breaking, the continuity of an otherwise flowing interview. It's an advice that please refrain from such a thing. Because what this does is this shows shows that you're not able to take initiative, not able to drive and speak about yourself. Then how will you be able to project a company later on in big light? To make sure you're able to speak. And obviously, if you drive an interview, that automatically gives them a chance to evaluate you on your communication skills as well, which is very, very important for an MBA. So communication skills is very important. Why MBA is very important. Being able to talk about interesting stuff, preferably around these two domains, is very, very important. The enthusiasm or the ring in your voice on your step is very important. And please be prompt. Another important thing that I would like to talk about is making sure that you're seeing your good extracurriculars, you're able to back that up. For example, if you're saying that you're good in singing or debating or acting or dancing and so on, be ready to perform for 30 seconds or something or some challenge they give you and so on. For example, if you're talking about debating, be prepared to be asked a random topic and being asked to speak for a minute, for and against. Similar, if you are into dancing, be prepared to perform a 30 second or max of one minute dance and impress the interviewers if they ask you to. Please do not feel shy at that part of time to showcase it, because remember, it's something that you have mentioned about in your form as something which you're really good at. And if you cannot justify it there, that you're actually really passionate about it, the interviewer will throw upon questions or will have doubts in his mind about the other things that you've written in your form. For example, there were interviews where they asked me to recite a few lines from Shakespearean plays. <coughs> and I actually did that in the interview and after that they were really, really impressed, the panelists. So make sure you are being able to do some similar such stuff. Similar if you are into singing, be ready to be able to sing. For not long, 30 seconds or so on is more than enough, but be prepared to do it. For the same thing applies for other domains like, well, I've seen people who've been asked to sketch while their interview is going on, people who've been asked to do a slight bit of artwork while they, because they mentioned about it, and so on. So make sure you're ready for anything that you mention in your CV. It'll automatically, your chances of converting increases drastically in that case. So these were some of the important cheat codes that I would personally follow to do well in the PI round. And for the GD and WAT, what I would do is primarily ensure that I'm talking about some facts and figures, being able to project myself in the initial portions of the discu discussions, especially the GD, if the WAT, I'm being able to underline key areas that I would like to highlight upon so that my WAT to get noticed. GD WAT is more about getting noticed and PI is more about getting remembered even after the interview so that there's always a fight to consider your case. One thing I'd like to say is a lot of you have this notion that if you have a low score in the written exam, even if you've got a call, you will not be able to convert. One thing I'd like to say here is this. I agree that your written scores will play an important role in your conversion. But at the same time, I know people who have converted very good B schools with very average or even on the bottom end of the spectrum percentiles in the written exam from among those who got calls. So it's not necessary that you will not be able to convert. Yes, the chances 
are a little bit stacked against you, but if you really do well in interviews, you can always still convert. It's you who needs to ensure that you are doing your best to convert your calls. So make sure you're introspecting by yourself and being able to speak about stuff. The next thing is, please do not bluff absolutely things on stuff which you have no idea on. At match, what you can do is exaggerate on things which you are good at. You might exaggerate a little bit one step further. That is still acceptable. But please do not bluff on stuff which you have no idea about because then the interviewers will easily catch you. A bit of exaggeration on something that you are aware about in details but it wasn't belonging to your personal life that is still maybe something that you may be able to manage manage and if you believe that you have some ideas about it you can talk about those as well if you want to so any questions so access to plus courses for CAT 2019 for a GDPR season, all of that is, is available in the Unacademy Plus CAT subscription. So as you can see, we have the CAT subscription. It's obviously best to go for a one-year subscription and save 50%. And plus, you have this referral code discount coupon of mine, which is Nilanjan Dutta. If you type that in the referral code, you automatically get a further additional discount. So make sure you're using the discount code as well. The good, the good thing about the subscription is one subscription will suffice your all your needs. Be it a DILR needs, be it a Quants needs, be it RC needs, be it GDPI needs, be it that needs of all the top educators combined, including all my courses, will be available as part of a single cat subscription yearly pass so you just need to pay once and be a part of the cat pass for one year and your cat 2019 and your quest for top b schools in the next admission season that is cat 19 and 1920 admission season is in safe hands so there's a link we can go and enroll that is on anacademy.com slash plus slash gold slash xndus this will direct you directly to the cat subscription pass where you can go for a one year pass which is the most recommended one given that cat is nine ten months away and you will your other exams as well plus jdpi to take care of this is the discount code do not forget to use this so you can get the extra additional discount there's the exact thing that you need to type so on that note I hope this was a very informative and a learning session for you. Remember, my live classes start tonight at 10 p.m. So make sure all of you enroll immediately for the live classes. On that note, once again, thank you everybody and happy learning.